well, welcome back for part two. I thought if somehow you might make it. Paul Vaughan isn't talked out by any means, the Rotherham United manager. Uh, he's, he's one of those uh, managers, well, that, I say one of those managers, one of those very few managers who always comes up with something interesting, something different, is always refreshing, always great to talk to, and doesn't talk in, in cliches. Like, uh, like, I know you're not going to criticise other managers, uh, Paul, but somehow you're your own man and you're very, very different to every, everybody else. How aware are you of that? See, I'm now trying to think of a funny cliche to come out with. <laughs> um, well, I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm not aware of it. I just yeah. think that um, it's just easy to be yourself all the time, isn't it? So there's no fake, there's no like, you know, hidden mirrors or smoke screen. I just say it as I see it most of the time. Heart you're, you're exactly what it says on the tin, aren't you? Yeah, it's just easy to be <laughs> yourself, isn't it? So if you interviewed me in three years' time or three weeks' time, whatever, I'd still be exactly the same, I think. I say things that I know everyone doesn't agree with, but um, it's just the It's way very I refreshing. Oh, whether, good, whether people agree with them or not, it's great to hear that. Oh, but good. there's always something in management, and we were, we were talking about this, we weren't talking names and patrol, we were talking during the break. There are always things in, in your job that the public cannot be aware of because, you know, you see your players train, you yeah. speak to your players as people, you place great store on their personal lives yeah. and how that affects their job, etc. Yeah. So there are things you can't say as a manager. No, no I mean, this isn't a, a true example, like has ever happened to me, but for example, you know, someone might say, why isn't he playing? And you, 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 you can't tell the truth, you can't say that he's having a bit of depression or, you know, he's had bad news, his mum's been found with a, you know, a disease or something I'm not trying yeah, to sound yeah. I'm not trying to make a joke of it but and you can't you can't say that so you have to say well you know I picked the team for this reason and that and sometimes and I'm, I'm fully honest so I struggle with that sometimes I have to you know skirt you're, around it you're which, getting hammered sometimes for not playing a certain player yeah. or, or, or what, what have you and you you've got to take that flack yeah. rather because you can't tell because well, I'm not well I'm not gonna I'm never gonna reason. yeah but I'm never gonna push my player over the parapet and no. let him get abuse. Uh, if, if there was abuse to be given, I'm, I'm happy to take it, but I would never let anyone, um, through my words, Do you know, go from a player. There was an example that I came across, which, was, uh, which we can talk about now, because yeah. Anthony Knockhart at Brighton came out and talked about his ordeal with depression, but people didn't know it for months, and Chris Hewton was taking the flack as Brighton manager. He's yeah. a lovely guy, great guy. Yeah, brilliant. For not playing him and <coughs> obviously he had to bat off the questions and just say he's not selected yeah, yeah. but uh, and the sad thing is for Chris yeah. if the team weren't doing well the fans would start doubting his ability to manage and then you know once you get yeah. a few not believing in him and then it, it can escalate and really he's doing he's doing a well he's doing a brilliant job anyway but he's just protecting his players and that's yeah. sometimes when managers when you, it's very difficult when you lose a game especially you're emotional yourself Obviously, mm. and when you watch the game back the next day, it's a bit different. But you emotionally yourself, you go in and speak to your players, thank them for their efforts, and try not to say too much. Uh, and then literally you walk out of there and you do your press straight away. And mm. the press might say to you, "Well, why haven't you done this or that?" And you, it's hard not to, you know, it is yeah. difficult. And you sometimes you need a little bit of breathing space before you do. But your press. managers, you know, managers are out a, a lot earlier than uh, earlier in my career. You know, sometimes before I've even packed away my talk sport gear in a press box and come down. I'm told, oh, he's already doing it. Yeah. And I, and, but years ago, that wasn't the case. It was the other way, and we, we were kept waiting for yeah, it. I think, I think years ago, if, if you lost or your performance was bad, the, uh, the managerial style, and it might still exist with certain managers, they would literally tell you for the next hour where everything went wrong. Whereas I don't, I don't think the millennials learn like that or want to listen to that or they just They're turn down off. enough. They're yeah. down enough. Yeah, you, you just don't need to hit them when they're down. I mean, don't yeah. get me wrong, there's times where at half time is different. You sometimes you need to G them up. But after the game, if they've lost, you know, they're as disappointed as I am. No one wants to lose a football match. They all want to win. And I just think, I mean, sometimes I do waffle on because I like chatting to them. But mostly it's about the thing about how we can get better. But I don't think there's that whole, you know, half an hour ago and like, that was wrong. That goal kick mm. was wrong. Who took that corner? Why did you do that with a throw in? It isn't like yeah. that anymore, in my opinion, not with my coaches for sure. We normally shake the lads' hand, thank them for their efforts and say, right, we'll see you this time Monday, we'll watch the game back and we'll try and improve. And then we always go through the same process on a Monday. And when you talk to, like if I talked to you straight after a game and you were angry because you wound up and your adrenaline's pumping still, 
And I said, look, why did you do that? There's more chance you could have come back at me going, well, I thought, and then it turns into this, yeah. like, which you don't want. Yeah. However, I speak to you Monday morning when I watch the game back, and my view might be different then as well. I might have got it wrong. You're having a coffee and we're having a chat. You can sort of say, look, Gaff, I did it because of this. I say, okay, well, I want you to do this, and it's a much better learning environment, and they're going to take on what you're trying to say, whereas sometimes it's a bit confrontational after the game. Yeah. But when I played, it was a little bit more like more, that. So more hence the press, in your face. Yeah, the press didn't start till 7 <laughs> o'clock at night. <laughs> hey, by the way, before we carry on, England in the West Indies. Uh, we're having an absolute nightmare. 233 behind, all out for 77. All out? Was, it was 7 or 8 down when I came in. Yeah, not good. Not good. <laughs> How on earth is that? Hey, by the way, I mean, we don't want England to have this kind of a shock. But how good to see the West Indies after it's years. Good. I mean, you, old one. fast bowlers, fast bowlers terrorising English batsmen in Bridgetown in Barbados. Ironically, hey, they got uh, criticised yeah. yesterday for not having any spinners. Yes. Uh, so they don't look so silly now, do they? No, they don't. It looks a good venue to go and watch, though. The little beach on the side. Yeah, great, isn't it? Cool. You see the swim, yeah. You've got the swimming pool as yeah. well. You and can the jet bike. You can sit on your jet bike and watch it, according <laughs> yeah. to Hammy. Only Hammy yeah. would know that. No. Oh, Hammy's got all that in, in yeah. place. I'll tell you what, <laughs> an unsung hero at Rotherham, and he's obviously not looking for too much publicity, is your assistant manager, R Richie Barker. I mean, you, you do all the front of house stuff, yeah. but I know from talking to people in the game how much respect Richie Barker has got. Yeah. There. Um, um, he, uh, yeah, he's a one-man uh, wrecking ball, really. It's funny because uh, <laughs> he's more bad. He's mean? more. He's more he's, bad cop he's than a bad uh, cop, good right. cop. He, um, Richie's loved coaching since he was a kid, really. Yeah. And since, like, when we were playing, he was taking his coaching badges at 24 when we were all going on family holidays. So he's always been dedicated, and you know, he's very methodical. And in fairness, when when I took the job on, I remember. Um, when uh, the chairman kindly asked me to do it full time, uh, you know, permanent. Uh, well, I say permanent for however <laughs> long. But uh, the first call I did was Rich and said, "Look, mate, I need I need help here." Um, uh, and I didn't think he'd take it because his family live on the south coast in Brighton. But he was really pleased to the opportunity, and I think he wanted to do something fresh. He came out of Charlton, you know, he'd managed at uh, Berry, he'd managed at Crawley, done really well. Uh, managed at Portsmouth, so he had a bit of experience, so it was a win-win for me, so I had my best mate there, but I also had a really good football coach, really methodical, but he'd also been a manager, so it helps because, you know, there's dark times being a manager, it's a lonely place, a very lonely place, so you've got to surround yourself with good people, but he is a very good person, a very good coach. Uh, I told him how I wanted to play, and obviously we talk about the sessions in the morning, but he mostly directs most of the coaching, if not all of it. I do a little bit here and there, but not a great deal. Hammy does a lot of stuff peripherating around Rich, but uh, what Rich does, and in fairness, what Hammy does and Polly, you know, they're, they're all really good people. And it's the same with any team. It isn't the, I'm obviously the voice box, so to speak, and everyone, you know, knows me. And it's funny, because me and Rich on a Saturday morning always go for a run down the canal. And this tickles me. So we run about 10, 9, 10 kilometres every Saturday morning for a home game. Then we go to uh, a famous coffee house, get a coffee and walk back, right? Now, Rotherham fans will see me and Richie walking back. So Richie's played at Rotherham as long as I have. No, not as long, but... So he's, but he's assistant manager, Rotherham player, legend, really. Done brilliant, you know, he's a massive part of this success now. And we'll walk down the road and fans will come up and go, all right, Warney, good luck today, cheers. All right, Warney, what do you think the score's going to be today? Um, well, I'm not sure, it's going to be a tough game. OK, good luck today, doing a great job, Warney, well done. And I'm thinking, I said to Rich the other day, I went, can they see you standing outside? <laughs> <Sorry, yeah. laughs> Literally, I mean, like, he's, he's a mad he's mountain, a isn't he? He's, he's a, a big, big guy. Man. And I said, I just don't understand why, like, I know that, you know, it's my name over the door, so to speak, but I wouldn't be anything without him or the other two coaches. But I, it amazes me that no-one ever speaks to him. So I said right. to, to Breck, and I went, Breck, what about when you and Ronnie were in charge? He went, nah, no-one wanted to speak to the bridesmaid. They just want to speak to the bride. They don't got no interest. Um, no one ever spoke to Brett when Ronnie was there. They just want to speak to oh. Ronnie. Does he it like, amazes me. Does he like that though? Or does, it, does he resent it slightly? <coughs> or does he, does well, it, I asked him because I was a bit embarrassed by it. Because yeah. I always feel a bit like, oh my God, please speak to Rich as well. Because like, he, he's a massive part of our success, obviously. It's like uh, Laurel and Hardy. So, uh, <laughs> so it's a massive part. And I don't know if that happens with Chris and Nilly, to be fair. If you see yeah. Chris and Nilly in the, in the town, would you just speak to, no, to Chris? No, I think people and, uh, would. Avoid, uh, they, uh, avoid Nilly's Nilly. And Nilly's, Nilly's like the super guy, coach. Yeah, yeah, he's a big guy. The Blades fans have taken him to, yeah, the, to their yeah. heart yeah. as they have the manager. I think that's slightly... Think. That's weird, though, I think. Because, yeah. you know, the, but they're both, but yeah. we're both Rotherham players. Exactly, That's yeah, what yeah. I find odd. That, so I said to Rich, like, say, for example, we get the sack next week or whatever, and we then go and take a job on. Let's say we take on, I don't know, 
now. Let's say we take Norwich's job on, right? Because obviously I'm a Norwich fan, right? But Richie's the manager and I'm the coach, let's just say. Like, if I walked down the street and everyone went, Richie, what a great job you're doing, I'd be like, well, you know. What about me? Uh, yeah, they yeah, say hello to me. me. It's like literally, so if any Rotherham fans, I presume, are watching this, if you see me and Richie after our run, like, blank me. Yeah. Blank me, I've had enough. Uh, just yeah, go, Richie, yeah. you're doing a great job. I don't know who this old fellow is with you, but you're doing a, <laughs> you're doing a great job. Because I get embarrassed that I think, yeah. oh my God, like, give him some credit. So it's nice for you to ask me the question, because I don't think, um, you know, most people who know football know how it works. And, like, like in fairness to Sh Sheffield United, it isn't just Chris, is it? It's nearly yeah. who, who it, does that. The good cop and bad cop is the other way around. Yeah. I was going to say it's the other way yeah, around. That's well, that's no, what, it's yeah. weird. I think the lads are more scared of Rich, because they always think he's going to flip. But... He, he, is a, he is a soft cop, but looks a hard cop, whereas right. I'm like a happy cop, and then I've got like a... A hard cop. Uh, I've, I've sort of got like a, uh, a guilty streak in me that I, when I speak to the lads, I'm not like a screamer, more of a like, I, I think you've let us down. You know, like yeah. you speak to your kids, look, give them that look, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> so it's more like that. We're not, we're not shouters and uh, screamers. We're more like, look, you know, we want you to be the best you can be. Have you been the best today? No. Why not? What can we do to help you? And if all the lads, you know, pull in the same direction and be the best they can be, we can have a chance. And that's yeah. all we ask, really. Well, it's been wonderful to hear from Richard Wood as well in here, you know, about how caring you are as a manager and you want the players to be caring of each other. And there were yeah. things they didn't know about their, their personal lives that you yeah. encouraged them to... to yeah, well, it was amazing. The like, at the start of the season, I know this is well reported, but start of the season, I wanted all the lads to have an emotional intelligence, to be self-critical, be self-aware but have an understanding of each other. That Some days you have a bad day's training, but you, you don't know what's happened. So normally if a lad has a bad day's training or looks a bit off, I always ask him, is everything all right? Because you don't know, do you? If he, mm. You don't know. But the lads didn't know. One of the lads didn't have a... He had a son and they didn't know. Amazing. Um, had some sad stories. Um, you know, someone lost his friend in a river and someone had to get another job to pay for his parents' house when they got evicted. And it was just loads of things. And the lads were sitting there thinking, oh, my God, this is amazing. Like, as in... I just didn't know that. So I tried to engage a bit of conversation and we try and tap into them. So like um, this year, we, uh, I bought all the lads a book, a different book, well, 12 different books I doubled up, but trying to help them to like self-improve and keep going. And if you score a goal at our club, I buy you a mug with your own picture on the side and, and just trying to make them enjoy playing at our club, but trying to be not quirky for quirky sake, yeah. but trying to self-improve them. That's what I'm trying yeah. to do. Can, can we have mugs with pictures on the... Uh, on, on I mean, you have, to, cho you, you have to choose, anyway, so. you have to choose your, your picture. So, for example, right. Will Vokes, who scored a yeah. few, he's got a picture of his dog on the side. Huh. Um, Sean Raggett's got a picture of himself in a wig on his Christmas do. <laughs> Joe Matter's got a picture of him looking, he, was a, he DJs a bit. He looks quite cool. It, it quite upset me how cool he looked. But other ones, like Woody, in fairness, is a proper one with his wife and kids, uh, girlfriend and kids, sorry, um, in his footy kit. So, um, yeah, so I'm trying to encourage him. And because we've got a little bit of illness in the camp at the moment, you can only drink out your own mug. So, obviously, mm. if, if I see someone else drinking out of the mug with a puppy on, I think, that's Will yeah. Vokes. That's a but, tenner. Yeah, yeah. You must put your tenner <laughs> five. I, like, I like that. You must have people in your dressing room who haven't scored, so therefore they haven't got a mug. Well, they use the generic mugs, which right. no one likes to look off. You know, like, you can get them, like, you know, 50p mugs. They just don't look yeah. as good. They don't retain the heat as long, so you're not... And, you, yeah. and if you've got a mug with the, your photo on, you can li be a little bit big time. Not that we encourage it in our dressing room, <laughs> but you, you've made yeah, it. You can beat the chest a bit, can't you? you you've made yeah, it. Like yeah. yeah. I'll tell you what, we'll give him a couple of minutes to check his phone. Because I know he's, he's, he's dying exactly. to check his phone. This time of year, it's got to so, be busy, hasn't it? Yeah, and, and you're busy with loads of other stuff. So yeah, well, uh, he's going to give us an exclusive in a couple of minutes. Yeah, I like that. We'll look forward to that. We'll look forward <laughs> to it. We'll start off with golf. We'll do the round up the uh, wrong way round, if you like, uh, because Paul's here this evening. So we'll start off with Sheffield's Matthew Fitzpatrick, who's leading the Dubai Desert Classic. Um, his first European Tour event of the season. He opened up with a uh, first round of seven under par. He leads by a stroke from a large pack, including Sergio Garcia and workshops Lee Westwood. Um, the other Sheffield golfing hero, Danny Willett, of course, Masters champion a couple of years ago. He's competing um, on the PGA Tour this week. Tiger Woods is in the field, and round one is underway currently. Well, from Tiger Woods to the Sheffield Tigers, two consecutive losses for the Dormore side. Um, in recent weeks. Well, they lost to Fylde last weekend and they're away to Huddersfield on Saturday. A loss too for Sheffield Rugby Union Football Club as well. Uh, they've got Litchfield at home this weekend in the division below. Uh, well, the Sheffield Steelers, we said that they needed a big weekend last yeah. weekend yeah. Um, against the Milton Keynes Dons. And uh, what, what, you, you were there? Were you? I was there. Yeah. I was just checking my phone. I was there. I was there. <laughs> you were there. 
I was there. I enjoyed it. Uh, well, you one, two, it. one. You like two, it, don't you? Low scoring. Yeah, I do. I, it was, in fairness, I preferred the game I went last night as well. Um, um, they lost to the Cardiff. Didn't yeah, they but it was a much night, better yeah. game in my opinion. In my very uneducated opinion. I, yeah. I, it was a much better game, but better atmosphere against a really good team. And I was impressed. But um, yeah, I like Isaki. You don't go. You used to see your Slukai there as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Manager. He, he used to uh, be a big fan, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Still yeah. is. A, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I uh, used to, so, in fairness, the Sheffield Wednesday staff used to uh, come in the, in the box with us. Uh, they were really, really good people. And yeah. in fairness, I used to spend a bit of time with Yoss, and he was saying, uh, the, like, we were talking about the difficulties in football managing and that, and he was um, he was a good like a good friend to me. To be fair, he gave me some good advice. Mm, seemed a decent man to me as well. Yeah. Anyway, uh, stuff, yeah. Well, big weekend for the Steelers this weekend because yeah. they've got Glasgow Clan at home, 7 p.m. tip off. Um, at home on Saturday, and they've got a trip to Manchester on Sunday. Sheffield Sharks, they lost to Bristol last weekend. They're still handily placed. They're second in the British Basketball League uh, this weekend. Playoffs very much in sight. And they've got Plymouth at home tomorrow. Uh, Sheffield United ladies moving on to football now. They've got Charlton at home on Sunday after a couple of weeks off. Uh, to men's football, Northern County East League sees Hallam away at Shirebrook. Uh, Stocksbridge uh, uh, hosting Morpeth. Um, Sheffield FC won last weekend and they host Pickering Town. And Saturday, well, our league clubs, Saturday sees the Blades playing against, well, Paul's side. Not Rotherham United, of course, but Norwich City um, away from home. Uh, sorry, uh, yeah. Um, Carrow Road. Yeah, at yeah. Carrow Road. Sheffield Wednesday, they've got that massive FA Cup fourth round clash sold out as well, I'm led to believe. That'll be a lively away day for Sheffield Wednesday fans down at Stamford Bridge against Chelsea, the likes of Eden Hazard etc coming up against Sheffield Wednesday it'll be a great test and could be a good away day and of course um, Leeds on Saturday are the opponents for Paul's side as well don't keep reminding him he's, he's been trying mm. to forget he's been trying to forget that I'll tell you what you've, 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 you, you, every team's got some big players uh, I mean you mentioned Will Volks earlier Shemir Jai I think mm. he's got an injury at the minute or whatever 50, I don't know if he's 50-50 for something yeah, tweeted and, medial alright and Michael Smith um, now as we speak, I don't think there's been any bids for any player, has there, at Rotherham? Check your phone if you want. Uh, yeah. No, not, no, uh, sincerely, uh, no bids. I mean, there's always, you know, rumours and all that, but no yeah. official bids. Um, so I hope people believe me when I say that, but there hasn't been any bids. But like a lot of the lads, um, and I said that at the start of the transfer window, if we could bring one or two in and keep the lads I've got, then I think we've had a good window. So I'm looking forward to it ending. You also have the problem with transfer windows that the lads who are on the periphery are getting a bit itchy, they want to go or not go, mm. and so it's a bit awkward. Excuse me, but Smithy's done brilliant. And like since we had him in, you know, when we signed him from Berry, remember someone wrote to the club and said we didn't know what we were doing. Uh, he's been excellent. He had to fill Kiefer's shoes, which are probably about a size mm. 12, but he's been brilliant. <laughs> and in fairness to him, like he takes all the credit. Like he listens to the coaches all the time. He wants to be the best he can be. But when I left today to do press at three o'clock, he was still in the gym when most of the players had gone. In a year, he's put on seven kg in muscle. So like he's a wow. strong kid. But and, and anyone who tries to put um, muscle on that is some effort. That seven yeah, kg. Yeah. So he's he, he's an absolute unit. But what I love about him, and which I think the fans have adhered to, is that um, his work rate is a joke. An absolute, and more often than not, when we go in after the game, the manager of the opposition go like, "What a handful he is!" And mm. uh, it's just disappointing, not disappointing, but um, we just need to get more service to him because I think he's got more goals than him. Yeah, he's, 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 he's no slouch in the speed stakes either for a no. big guy, is he? And he's got some techniques, some great yeah. goals as yeah, well. Yeah, fantastic. In, in as well, really, really good uh, player. Uh, you, you mentioned the lo the local derbies, which kind of you fear at times, yeah. uh, less so Leeds, but you've got Sheffield Wednesday, you've also got Sheffield United at Bramall Lane yeah. on March, March the 9th. Yeah. Uh, I, it's not, it's not a, like, I don't know if I explain myself, it's not a fear of like, the opposition, it's a fear of the outcome. Like, I mm. want the fans to be proud to be Rotherham fans, I want the fans to love this group of players, because I think they're an amazing group who we've had together uh, now for nearly two seasons. So. I just don't want them to let themselves down and it's because I want them to do so well I sort of go into the game with a bit of I don't want to eat and you know I feel a bit which I presume all managers are like but maybe because I've got an emotional attachment to this club you know them games I know how much it means to everyone and people still yeah. talk about Richie's goal against Sheffield Wednesday and you know and I understand how it goes down in history so I, I don't want the lads to 
blur their, you know, sketchbook or whatever the same no, is. You can run all the way down the canal when you come to Bramall Lane. It goes from that end to this. Oh, that's you'd good be, news, isn't it? Maybe, maybe more people will t talk to Richie this end yeah. of the yeah. uh, canal. That means might know more. Yeah, well, it would be interesting to see whether, as a result of this conversation here, that they ignore you and just talk to Richie in the. In I the mean, don't computer. ignore me. I don't want to go that far. <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> yeah. She James mentioned Sheffield Wednesday at uh, Chelsea, of course. Um, I give them a chance there. I don't know what, what you looking in from outside. You know, I mean, you've just been to Manchester City, but it's not quite like that, no, is it? No, it isn't. Manchester City yeah. is a different, different level, level, isn't it? I mean, yeah. in fairness, Premier League clubs go to Man City and have the same. Uh, the same problem, and they play away, which is, and in fairness, Leeds obviously because Pep's got his style off Bielsa. So that's how Leeds play the whole five up top, and it's difficult. Chelsea aren't like that. I don't think Chelsea are a little bit devoid of um, confidence at the moment. They've got a you know problem with Hazard and his contract, and who plays up top. They don't really have a striker, and in fairness, it's a. We've, we said it earlier, it's a bit of a free hit for Sheffield Wednesday. They can go there and, and have a right go and, and see what they win. But if a they're, they're the Urbana, underdog, they're yeah. the underdog, and it's not very often that they, they're the underdog in games. So they'll take a good following and think, right, it's an FA Cup game, let's have a go. 6,000, yeah. I think you referred earlier, that sell out of tickets. Uh, Sheffield Wednesday have sold all 6,000. I mean, for 6 pm on a Sunday night yeah. down in London, sold out yeah. like that, just unbelievable, That's really. Brilliant. Um, it's good, though, isn't it? Oh. It's great. Good. But yeah, it's great that the Premier League team also set out as well. Chelsea always packed them in for the FA Cup. They've yeah. never lost their valuation. For them, yeah, that is it's an important competition yeah. because they're not going to win the Premier League. No. And, you know, not this season, top, anyway. You know, top four is sort of there or thereabouts. But FA Cup's a big one, isn't it? You know, it's yeah. the last chance. And, and to even more so, you know, with the. The, is it the game against Tottenham tonight? Is it? Yes. Mm, yes. So if that game doesn't go well, the pressure will be heaped course, on for yeah. the next one. So, and they need to win something because. Um, I just finished reading um, oh, whose autobiography is it? A football manager used to be at, at Chelsea, uh, the Italian. Oh, uh, uh, Angelotti. Yeah. yeah. Uh, brilliant book, by the way, the best one I've read. Oh, really? Yeah. And he was saying that if the team lost, Abramovich would be at the training ground eight o'clock the next morning, screaming in his face. So his Jeez. his um, you know his attitude to defeat isn't great. So. Knowing that, I presume the manager will feel under massive pressure yeah. playing Sheffield Wednesday because if he loses that game, let's pay tribute to you finally for the fact that in itself this is an achievement. Two years and two months, manager at Rotherham United for any, uh, for any, yeah. for any yeah. manager to go. You know, did you, did you feel that? Do you feel proud of that? Yeah, I do. Um, I do because it wasn't something I uh, trained for or wanted. Mm. Um, and it is very tough. It's a lot harder than uh, people think. I th you know, I worked for different managers and I still didn't think it was that hard, but yeah. it is hard, it is, it is, uh, the frustrating thing is that you judge literally by Saturday, you're not judged by your week, mm. so, like, we prepare the lads brilliantly, I think, in our, my opinion, but all week we dedicate our lives to it, and if the team win, everyone thinks what you've done is great, and if the team lose, everyone thinks what you've done is rubbish, but your work ethic is still there, yeah. and you can't get away from it, I think that's the one thing as a manager, I think as a coach, or as a fitness coach, or as a physio, and my staff are fully dedicated, but they can get away from it, whereas I cannot. So, yeah. you know, after the game Saturday, I'll speak to the chairman Saturday night, and he's brilliant with me, I don't mean it rudely, but then Sunday morning I'll get up and I'll speak to the chairman again, and if it's a defeat, it's a conversation which is, you know, he's brilliant with me, but I, I'm embarrassed that we've lost, so it's a difficult one. Whereas my staff can have a, you know, a good day's rest and refresh, and then I'm thinking about the team, and I might text some of the players to thank them for their efforts, I might text my staff to keep them upbeat, and it's just a constant thing, I think. Uh, so it is a difficult job. It is fully rewarding as well. But uh, then two years, two months yeah. feel uh, a lot longer. A lot longer, but but long may you reign. And uh, thanks so much for coming in again, Paul. Mm, it's no been worries. a real pleasure to see you and fantastic yeah. to listen to you. We could go on all evening. See, I told you I could go Thank on you all evening. I know, I know. Um, that's it for this week. More guests next week. Uh, this is repeated later and on my YouTube. See you, see you next week. Bye.